what if computers were more like people? What if we could interact with them in a more natural and a more intuitive way? More like we interact with other, human, other humans. Obviously, that's not really the case today, right? Take this smartphone. It is really quite smart. It helps me navigate around the city. When I search for information, it replies pretty fast and often with accurate, useful results. And when I type things into it, like messages, sometimes it seems to be able to predict exactly what I want to write, which can be pretty magical, very useful. Still, it's just a gadget. I don't have casual conversations with it, maybe through it, but not with it. It's a tool, it's not a friend or a colleague. But then there are thousands and thousands of people around the world, software developers like myself, who are trying to change this situation. We're trying to develop artificial intelligences, AIs, that really engage with people on a deeper level, systems that learn and adapt independently, systems that are more flexible, more, let's say, less, less mechanical, um, systems that share our human world of references to things we as humans care about and know about. But obviously, this is a very difficult task. And many times, to be honest, it fails. Take Siri, the voice assistant, in the iPhone. Sometimes it behaves in an almost human way. It seems to understand what people say to it. Other times, things go terribly wrong. And there are countless of such stories out there on the internet. One user said, Siri, I think I have alcohol poisoning. What do I do? And Siri replied with a list of liquor stores nearby. <laughs> Someone else said, um, Siri, call me an ambulance. And the phone replied, OK, from now on, I'll call you an ambulance. <laughs> okay, mistakes happen. Perhaps we can't expect computers to be perfect. Um, people aren't perfect either, either, right? We sometimes get each other wrong. Um, still, I think there's a difference. I think people get, we get each other wrong in a different way. There's something about Ceres and her <laughs> colleagues um, misunderstandings that they seem so, I don't know, unhuman, maybe software-ish in a way. We call them bugs and glitches, these behaviors. And these bugs and glitches, they're really a software developer's nightmare. We try really hard to identify these glitches, to understand them, and then to eliminate them to patch things up, to make our systems more robust and, in a sense, more predictable. But what if glitches are sometimes useful, if they carry some potential? What if the mistakes are sometimes more interesting than the successes? Recently, glitches and unexpected outcomes have started to play an important role in my research and development. Uh, a few years ago, I was contacted by Valencia James, a dancer based in Budapest in Hungary. Valencia was interested in exploring if there are any possible connections to make between dance and AI. And we started to work together towards a kind of vision, an improvised dance duet between a human dancer and a, an AI dancer. Perhaps in the form of a performance where a human and a virtual 
dancer would interact with each other on a stage. After some time, we had developed something, a kind of virtual dancer that learns things from a human and then generates its own movements. Movements that share similarities with what it has been taught, but that also go beyond those things into new kinds of moves. And Valencia and myself, we were both quite stunned by the complexity and novelty of these generated movements, how they would range from human-like, in a way, familiar, recognizable, to highly creative and sometimes bizarre, extreme, and impossible for a human body to perform. And Valencia took this thing, it was a, like a software that she had installed on her laptop, she took it to her dance studio, and she started to use it as a source of inspiration. She created choreographies, partly based on movement ideas generated by this AI. Looking back, I can see that my v collaboration with Valencia has taken an unexpected turn. Initially, we were aiming for some kind of mutual exchange between a human and a virtual dancer, an encounter that would blur out, or at least question the boundaries between the human and the digital, between the natural and the artificial. But along the way, something happened. And I think what happened was that we, we started to appreciate the peculiarities and the weirdnesses displayed by the AI. Its ability to fundamentally surprise us, to do things we had never anticipated. And what started as a kind of potential dance partner turned into something else. Now it was also, and perhaps primarily, a generator of ideas, a catalyst, um, creativity enhancer. When I began this presentation, I asked, what if computers were more like people? What if we could interact with them in a more natural and intuitive way, more like we interact with each other? But after having worked with Valencia and with dance, that whole way of thinking seems somehow more distant for me. Today, I'm more interested in asking, what if computers can help us to be more creative, to break out of our habits, to extend our imaginations? What if AI can pull us out of ourselves.